many people do ask, are NAD plus injections worth it? And the long and short of it, it really depends on the person. So let me break down who likely needs it most and gets the most benefit from injections. And then I'll go into some caveats, things to watch out for, as well as dosing protocols. First and foremost, NAD plus injections aren't better than MNN or NR. It's just a different strategy. So those two I just mentioned, MNN and NR, or the other one is niacin, which I'll come back onto very shortly. These are all precursors, you know, adding a substrate to your NAD plus pool so that they're important to factor in. And then you've got uh, plugging those NAD plus leaks in your salvage pathway. So you've got uh, CD38, uh, NMMT and then this rate limiting enzyme NAMPT so you don't want any like kind of um, breakdown of your NAD plus in that salvage pathway you know like inefficiency it does take some time you know there are supplements lifestyle factors but unfortunately with age those uh, those drains do go up and then that's where NAD injections come in. That's why some people use them. One thing you've got to factor in is extracellular NAD is a messy process it, and actually entering in, in the cell. So it's thought that a lot of this NAD is, it actually comes from breakdown of it and signaling rather than actually entering in the cell. And that's why fixing all those other areas, the precursors, but not overdoing it and fixing that salvage pathway, that's more of the long-term aim. And NAD injections is a top up for certain people. Moving on to who generally gets the most benefit from NAD plus injections. Unfortunately, a lot of these clinics that prescribe it don't really give out this information, but so people that one really uh, good use uh, case of doing it is um, if you're on niacin, I mentioned that earlier, in particular nicotinic acid, the flushing kind. Some people do for improving HDL, it's one of the best things you can do for improving your good cholesterol. Especially that some people do it, say if they're on TRT, because that's inevitably uh, your HDL it does come down. And But the drawback with using nicotinic acid, out of all the precursors, you've got two different kinds of niacin, but nicotinic acid is the one that really drives up this metabolite called 2PY. There's another one, 4PY. So these show an imbalance like downstream with like methylation, and so when that goes up, you might be improving cholesterol, say with niacin, but then you're actually driving up 2PY, and this is linked to cardiovascular events, uh, arterial inflammation. So you're kind of improving one area, but then making something else worse. And so by mega dosing precursors, I've seen people do 500 milligrams of niacin, 1000 milligrams, even more, you get the slow release kind, but generally 2PY will go up. And so that's definitely, these are people that do benefit from cutting down on any kind of precursor, but mainly the niacin, cutting down on that and then using the, the NAD injections as a kind of bridge. And then other people like older adults generally will get more of a noticeable effect, especially if they haven't been healthy their whole life. Immune compromised people as well, like even like post viral. Uh, ex heavy drinkers, you know, in the last, if they've given up in the last year or two years, generally they, they, they do notice NAD plus injections because their NAD is just so compromised all after all those years of just being a heavy drinker. Also, people that work long hours, you know, maybe a slightly sleep compromised, high stress jobs, especially if it's a sedentary job as well, you're not moving. And that's uh, generally like people feedback. Uh, their response to NAD injections is just smoother energy throughout the day, not just on the day of injection, but following that two, three days after. And then so less of that burnout feeling. Also, some people report better cardio, at least over time with injections or improved mental clarity, especially under a lot of like stress, you know, that's your brain just works more efficiently. Same with the, your metabolism as well, like post meal, not feeling as sluggish after that, your body just feeling slightly warmer. I talk about mitochondria on a daily basis with people. So think of th them as the engine and ATP as the power. And so NAD plus, it's not, I would say it's not like horsepower, it's more less drag. That's what people feel like. 
Another way to think about it is NAD isn't the fuel, it's part of the ignition system improving efficiency. So if you're low in it, the engine still runs just rough and not efficiently. And so it's all about fine tuning your mitochondria through all those complexes. So you get good ATP power output and that comes down to other support pathways like antioxidants and therefore redox balance. You've got mitochondrial biogenesis as well as uh, mitochondrial repair as well, that cardiolipin, that inner membrane. Some people mentioned to me about testing all the different complexes of the mitochondria. I prefer just to measure the kind of output more called like ATP5B, that biomarker. It's more cost effective doing it that way. And then just measuring rather than looking at all the complexes and working out which supplements would work best to support that complex, you can just directly measure those antioxidant supports that uh, will work in those areas. And so you can just do that all with one test. And then same with NAD+, plus, like uh, testing that as well. You can do it with reasonable precision. I believe it's in around the 3.2 percentile, something like that, three and a half. Uh, and so that, that could be helpful. But again, I prefer just measuring the precursors. You can do this all in one test, as I mentioned measuring the precursors and then uh, measuring for inefficiency as well. So you're trying to maximize the precursors, minimize the inefficiency to PY. Now jumping over to dosing NAD injections. So if you're new to it, 50 to 100 milligrams is advisable just to see your response. People uh, past that point, once they know they handle it well, 100 to 200 milligrams is typical. When you start going above that, then the benefits start to wane and then the side effects go up. And so moving on to that, the side effects, the most common one is a real feeling of heaviness, like 10 to 30 minutes after that shot. I definitely notice it. Myself, I'm doing 125 milligrams. And then the frequency, that needs to be talked about as well. A lot of people do, you know, like <clears throat> as a maintenance dose, like one to two times a week. I think two is the best ROI. Some people go higher, like three days a week. But yeah, in that kind of region. And I mentioned about that heavy feeling. You might get like a lightheaded uh, kind of rush as well, warmth. Or some people feel like pressure in the head as well. So all these things. And that's why it's not a great pre-workout. I have tried it for that. But it's just because that, that feeling lingers for like, yeah, a good half an hour that real heavy feeling is very, very noticeable. So if you're going to the gym, even if you're doing cardio or weight training, that is definitely not what you want, feeling heavy and lethargic. And then once that feeling goes, gradually the energy starts to come on. And like I say, it's not like a stimulant. It's more just like I say, the, the smoothness of energy just throughout the day. For example, I've been on it for coming up to it's like what like a month nearly now like and then so i've got like uh, over that period i've been feeling like i actually had a cold in the last week and then my energy was actually very very consistent even with poor recovery scores and you know like i said it's not like a massive surge of energy but just through the day and into the evening to at six o'clock when i finish I feel actually like I could go on longer, but it's me telling myself, well, no, that, that this is now your time. You don't want to become a workaholic. And then on that subject, some, some people do really notice that kind of mental clarity, just smoothness. That's something, because I'm doing all these other factors for supporting NAD, it's obviously it's nowhere near noticeable for me, like in the same degree as other people, but there is something there myself I talked about 2PY earlier I've made like a nice little improvement 5% from between July to November so I'm hoping to improve that further still by reducing my niacin intake and then and since by doing that between those two tests my ni my nicotinamide level it's another name for NAM which is like it's a precursor to niacin and so that has actually come down because I've dropped half my dose, but it also shows potential just um, my body's become more efficient at using it as well. But my 2PY fortunately has come down. So if I, I'm not gonna increase my niacin from back where it is now 25 milligrams back up to 50, because I'm seeing my 2PY improve, what I'm doing is using MNN that precursor and so that would be interesting to see i'm doing that like i've been doing that five days a week just to, because it's not so uh, uh, heavy on driving up that metabolite 2py 
And so it'd be interesting to see if I can really optimize those precursor levels with, and still getting my TPY further down still from the 9th, 39th percentile. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. So the two days I'm doing my NAD injections are Tuesday and Thursday. Normally Monday I have a pretty good recovery because I've got lots of light exposure over the weekend, less stress. But then as I build up into the week, that's where those um, recovery scores, my heart rate variability inevitably starts to drop off. So that's why doing those two shots. And on those two particular days, I still take my niacin as part of my vitamin complex, but those are the two days I won't take that MNM precursor. I'm only doing a light dose of 250 milligrams, I might add, but it's all about trying to fine tune it, as I said earlier. You know, you don't want to just keep putting fuel into your NAD plus pool. It's a bit like a good analogy is, say my car, it's been remapped before I bought in it, just the previous owner, uh, it's just pumping in too much fuel. It runs very rich. And so, yeah, it does create more power, but um, it does like, it needs to be serviced more often as well as being clean more often. Cause it just, you know, if, it, if I go hard with it, there's more, you know, like um, fumes coming out the back of it, making the back of the car dirty. It's just not running as efficiently as it could be. If you know, if it's fine tuned a bit more with a better map that's designed for that car. And it's the same thing with those precursors. You're trying to get away with, the, the least amount you really do need and just fixing that uh, NAD recycling, the efficiency there. Following on with that metaphor, NAD plus injections could be considered nitrous, you know, injecting that into an engine, so bypassing fuel completely and just uh, giving that extracellular matrix uh, NAD, like a big pulse of that. And so you're not needing any precursors there either. And so, yeah, it's just interesting to see my response being someone is fairly optimal. There's definitely areas to work on with my mitochondria. But yeah, and then so with, with uh, my working days, I'm noticing, yeah, consistent energy, as I say, and even into the afternoon, post-lunch, whatever. And like, because I have to work quite hard these days, like because of the way I've priced my consultations, I'm priced more at the lower end for volume. And so it means that I'm a bit more under pressure than other people that charge more, but to have a review of people's bar markers between sessions for that price. And so it means that I'm under pressure more, jumping at the deep end. Some people might have never spoken to before and I have to just review things like instantly right in front of me. And it, that, that can go on for three hours. I might have like, th you know, three one hour sessions or a two and a one. And that's quite intense over that period of time without any like kind of breathing space, like to actually really assess things I'm having to like you know review things from multiple different sources that, that you know different uh, diagnostics that they might have done and so it is quite taxing but I've been noticing yeah but just optimize my NAD over this period of time doing I'm doing other things to fix a salvage pathway simultaneously and I am noticing that my mental clarity is just that bit better I'm, I'm doing things to support brain derived neurotrophic factor as well so just stimulating no, adaptability, better learning, pattern recognition. So all these things are just coming together. And by the end of the day, when it comes to six o'clock, as I just said earlier, I actually feel still pretty good. Like, you know, if I, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, my, I would have been a bit more drained at that time. So these things all come together to make a difference. So for myself, I'm doing that 1000 milligram vial over four weeks, doing two shots a week. Post-workout, I train in the morning. So like just like around breakfast time when I get home and then just you know, let it kind of run its course during the day. And so that means you generally like to, to reconstitute it. I personally did four mil just to minimize how much liquid is in there. But it means yeah, it's run it's slightly thicker, the solution. It does drain perfectly into, you know, like a 30 gauge um, insulin syringe, just fine. Some people might want to, add a bit more water to it, like maybe up to like five mil. The thing is you don't, because if you're using half mil syringes, you don't want to have to do multiple shots. It's a bit different if you're using one mil syringes, but yeah, what five mil is works fine. But for me, even four, so it just means like, um, what would that be? 37 and a half units for myself. And it, yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable from Peptides of London I've been getting it from, and it's what, like, what, it's a hundred pounds without any discount, but they offer like 20% off 
when you first buy and then there's a 15% off continuous code. So it's pretty reasonable for doing a cycle of it. Uh, as I said before, I just really, I'm, think, I'm big on optimizing NAD, but like, you know, fixing that salvage pathway, that's like a long-term project for people. But if they just want a boost, if you're a bit older, you're new to optimization and just wanting that kind of surge, get you back into the gym. If, the, if you generally do feel drained, obviously it might not be down to just... Um, NAD plus like inefficiency or just like low levels in general it can be down to multiple different factors but without doing diagnostics you don't know for sure but it's sometimes it's a good place to start if you've like I said earlier but people do it who are heavy drinkers generally they do get a pronounced effect if they've quit drinking in the last three to six months or cut down massively they generally they will feel a surge from that NAD. So if you've got any feedback with using NAD plus injections, then feel free to comment down below. I'm always interested to hear people's response, especially now as it's not deemed as experimental, it's getting mainstream approval for good and bad reasons. Some people labeling it as like an anti-aging miracle, which it's not. So if you like that video, then check out this one on 5-amino-1-MQ. That compound I mentioned earlier, it works by inhibiting NMMT, so helping with that methyl drain in the NAD salvage pathway, in particular, you know, nicotinamide, the, uh, the methylation, uh, like excretion of that. And so that's just further downstream of 2PY, that metabolite that I'm desperately trying to keep down low. Also, there's another one on Motsi, another very interesting peptide, so just helping with mitochondrial biogenesis. Thanks for watching. See you next time.